to talk to you about our jet drive steering pins or articulation pins. So this is what the pins look like. They've got a, a head and they have two different diameters, two O-rings on them, and our logo and some information etched on the top. They're made out of 304 stainless. They're CNC machined, pretty tight tolerances. <clears throat> the idea here is that you eliminate the Eyeliner, which normally would go in here in your group or your nozzle adapter, the straight pin and the cross bolt, which would go in over here. So normally you'd have a bolt right here, where I now have a zerk. There's two of these pins for kind of obvious reasons one on the top, one on the bottom. There's also some Del Ren washers that go in between the nozzle and the droop or nozzle adapter. Those Del Ren washers allow the nozzle to stay centered in the nozzle adapter and prevent anywhere to, uh, from happening. Similar to what the nylaners have because those have a little flange on them. The machine work required to do the retrofit, as you can see here, I've machined this flat surface flat and then poked four holes in it. Only reason we do that is because it's done in a CNC machine. And it makes it where you're less likely to have any drill walk, have the taps break, things like that. It guarantees this surface is flat. We use this bore to establish this surface. So we pick up this bore, set it perpendicular to the mill table, mill this flat. It was only like two or three thousandths is all it took to clean it up, and then drill the holes. You can, however, do this modification by hand. This group was done by me by hand with a hand drill. The way that it's done is you put your pin in, you orient it the direction that you want it oriented. So if for some reason you wanted it oriented at a 45 or whatever, you could do that. I chose to do it straight in line with the rib. <clears throat> You then use a transfer punch and transfer punch it. Then you come in with a drill that is just barely smaller than the nominal diameter of the hole. And you create a pilot, leaving the pin in there. You would drill just down to the edge of the tip, basically, of the drill. So that way it creates a nice pilot. And then I personally left the pin in and drilled the, the tap drill hole for the 1032. At that point, you pull the pin out and tap your first hole. Once you have the, the hole tapped, you can put the pin back in and put your screw in. It's important at this point to note that you need to tap the holes at least 3 eighths of an inch deep. Uh, I would recommend not breaking through. These are blind holes as well that we've done here. Um, blind, uh, breaking through could weaken the housing, but it shouldn't. Um, but it would be better off to make them not all the way through. There's three quarters of an inch of material here, three eighths of an inch deep is about half life. Put your first screw in after you've tapped that hole and then repeat the process for the other three. What I did is I did one and then I did the second one and I pulled the pin out, tapped it, put it back together, made sure the bolts went in, did the third one. I did them one at a time. After the first one's done, you should be able to, in theory, do the other three where you center punch, or I'm sorry, transfer punch it Drill it with the larger drill just to get the point. Drill it with the tap drill and then tap it. And you could even tap it with the pin in there as well. Once that's complete, <clears throat> you no longer need your nylon liner, which would go in here. The diameter of the pin is approximately 5,000 smaller than the diameter of your nozzle. The diameter of the pin here is approximately three to four thousand smaller than this diameter so it's a nice fit you can see there's very little discernible slop and the o-rings provide about 10 to 15 thousandths of compression inside the nozzle bore when you go to assemble this you'll want to grease this initially and then we'll get to the grease zerk here in a second um, then you'll have a grease zerk for serviceability one thing to note is when you do go to assemble these to the nozzle, it's pretty easy to line up. 
the pin has a, a little pilot there that will catch on the, the nozzle bore. It may take a slight tap of a dead blow hammer to get it to seat, but you shouldn't have to bang on it. It should just be kind of a tap, tap, tap and get it seated. You do want these to be all the way seated before you put the screws in. You do not want to use the screws to suck it down. Um, you want to make sure it's sitting nice and flat and then you, you'll torque the screws to no more than 30 inch pounds. We are going to recommend uh, between 20 and 25 inch pounds. Now for the nozzle modification to make this whole thing work, where these two zerks are here is where your cross bolts used to be. That hole happens to be about 5 16 in diameter. A 5 16 hole is just barely smaller than the tap drill size for an eighth NPT tap. What you'll want to do is drill this hole out for the appropriate drill uh, for an eighth NPT tap. And then you'll use an eighth NPT pipe tap, tap it, and then thread your zerk fittings in. This, the drilling and tapping has to be done with the nozzle off, but you could, you could thread the, the zerks in with the pins together. I did it without the pins in it. I did it before I put it all together. Once that's all done, you have everything assembled, your zerks are in place, you can put grease in there. There's not a lot of area between the pin and the, no the nozzle bore, so it's not going to take a lot of grease in through the zerk. However, if you liberally coat this, with gr this area with grease when you put it in, and then you give it a pump or so on your grease gun, you should have plenty of grease in there and should give you a lot of life out of it. The, uh, the O-rings, haven't, I haven't seen any discernible wear on the O-rings and have quite a bit of drive time on them now. Um, and as long as you keep it greased, you should have lots of serviceability. The pins being 304 stainless shouldn't show any signs of uh, corrosion. You may see over time corrosion with the threads and the screws. However, this is no different than you would see on your bowl bolts, holding on your group or holding the, the bowl to the suction housing. If you want, you can put a slight bit of anti-seize or some sort of grease on the threads before installing it. But what you don't want to do is put red Loctite. I know some people like blue Loctite because it keeps things from vibrating. However, my recommendation is either put them together dry or with some sort of anti-corrosion lubricant. If you do put them together with an anti-corrosion lubricant, you need to torque it to a lower value. I would torque it to no, no more than 20 inch pounds um, just to make sure that you do not pull the threads out or strip out the screws. The screws that come with the kit are these guys. They're little low profile socket head screws. They have a pretty small hex on them. Don't strip them out. Um, you can, what I do is I get them close with, close to tight with a Allen wrench, just get them snug. And then I break out the torque wrench and I torque them to spec. So we sell not only the pins, we also offer as a service the machining to do this, we'll machine both sides obviously. And then we also offer a kit which gives you all the drills and taps you need to be able to perform this. They'll give you the drill that is just slightly smaller than this minor diameter. It'll give you the tap drill for the 1032. It gives you the tap drill for the 8th NPT. It gives you the 1032 tap. It gives you the 8th NPT tap. And it also gives you the transfer punch for the hole here. In addition to that, you'll also get with the kit, if you choose to buy our drill and tap kit, a 3 8 drive extension. The 3 8 drive extension is used when doing the tapping in the zerk fitting hole. As you can see, reach in here across the tiller arm is a little bit tight. So what I recommend and what I did is I drilled my hole and then I use the 3 8 drive extension. I put it backwards. The heck, the square on the tap is a little sloppy inside the square of the extension, but it's good enough. Then you put the extension inside your drill, and then you can use your drill to power tap it. It's important not to go too deep. You don't want the zerk fitting to bottom out. It's a little hard to see here, but you can see there's a little bit of space between the flange and the face of the nozzle. <clears throat> NPT threads are supposed to have about two to four threads of engagement before getting tight. Um, these are what's called PTF threads, which is an NPT. It's a tapered pipe. However, the threads are shorter for this application. You still want to have 
about two threads before it starts getting tight. You shouldn't need to crank on it and make it super tight, but we need to get it to seal, and so you do need to put a little bit of torque on it. We have this kit available on our website, ready for sale now. We're finishing up production on these, and they're ready, going to be ready to head out the door very shortly. Once again, pins. Uh, the kit comes with the pins, the O-rings, so you get four O-rings, you get eight screws, and two Delrin washers. Once you receive your kit, you should be able to do your retrofit. It takes about a half an hour to do it. You can use your bowl as your fixture to drill the holes. That's how I did it. You can take your snoot and leave it bolted like normal to do the top, and you can actually flip it 180 degrees to do the bottom if you choose to do it by just to do this by hand. If you do want us to do the machine work, you need to send us not only your snoot, you need to send us the nozzle. When you purchase the kit, the kit will, if you choose the shipping or the, the machining, the shipping will be just for the pins. After the machine work is completed, you'll get an invoice from us for the shipping of your snoot and nozzle. This is because depending on what you send us, the shipping is always a little bit different where you're going. So we didn't want to charge a flat rate just for uh, shipping the snoot and the nozzle. Look forward to uh, selling you guys some of these things. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. We'll send, we're going to make more of these. Make sure you hit the little bell icon. that will notify you every time we make a new video and it'll let you know to come watch it. You can buy these on our website at www.drewbuilt.com. And uh, always keep an eye out. Might even bookmark that page so that way you can see what we come up with next. We're always releasing new products and always doing new R&D. Thank you.